Good morning, everybody. It's almost afternoon here in Connecticut. It's Jane from Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. Today's little mini tutorial is going to be about stenciling. I have a, a customer who asked me about stenciling and particularly how to not get it to leak under the stencil, what's the technique, what products to use, and all of that. So what I'm gonna show you, I have this cute little um, piece of furniture that I got from Ikea. It's just this little organizer that, I, you know, I'm, I love little pieces of furniture little jewelry boxes, that kind of stuff. They're so much fun and they're great things to try out new techniques on, like stenciling. So it's painted in this really beautiful blue. This blue has a little bit of green in it, so I chose um, a green color to stencil and they're both chalk paints. So, um, and that doesn't mean you can't use other styles of paint to stencil. It's more about the technique, frankly. So, um, I wanted something that was gonna be a little subtle. I'm very into spring right now, so I chose this really pretty green. So I'm gonna show you how to stencil one of these draws, and this is a smooth finish. I'm also gonna show you how to stencil on a really rough finish because you can do both. You could pretty much stencil on anything. So what you need is a stencil brush. Um, I've used sponges, I've tried to use a, a regular brush, but stencil brushes are made just for this. They're really stiff. When you stencil, you don't tap to the side. It is perpendicular to your surface always. So a stencil brush is just perfect for this. So that's what you're gonna need. And a good quality one. This is a natural bristle. Um, it's very firm stencil brush. And I have little ones if I wanna do something really tiny. And I use this one a lot also. And I have a paper plate here. You can use a regular plate, but you need something where you could dip into your paint and then offload. You don't want to have wet, a wet, soaking wet brush dripping with paint. That's going to guarantee it's going to go underneath your stencil and you're not going to be happy. I also have my paint here and it's pretty thick. I've used thin paints. I just end up blotting more and I'll use like a piece of um, paper towel if I have a paint that's really, really wet. So, and of course you need a stencil. And I'm not sure if this one has it, but I have wall stencils and bigger furniture stencils and they'll have little registration marks. So that way, if you wanna continue your design, you just line up the registration marks and stenciled walls, you know, not the 19, I remember growing up with those 1980 stencils, like people would put right up against the ceiling of geese with this kind of funny mauve pink and, um, oh, I just, you know, it wasn't good and, and they've mostly been painted over for a reason. Um, so don't let it turn you off if you think about that when you think about stenciling a wall. There's beautiful stencils, really beautiful paints in a million different colors. You can also um, stencil with size, gilding size. You put your size through, lift it up, it comes to tack and you just put down um, your gold leaf and you can make really beautiful things. So we're using this script stencil. I have no idea what it says. And here's the paint. Normally, I would tell you to tape down your stencil so it doesn't move. This one is just too big for this draw, and, and I don't have my tape with me. So um, I'm really gonna hold it firmly in place and take my time. Dip, 
the stencil brush into the paint. And like I said, you offload a lot. You could always add more paint. And then you hold it perpendicular and you tap. and resist the urge to lift the stencil and look because it can move. And you can make really beautiful effects. If I wanted to, I could bring in another color and kind of blend them in together. Um, three different colors. Like I always say, the possibilities are endless with this. Okay, one more corner. Of course, my fingers are Sticking. And that is it. And then you get your beautiful design. And if I wanted to soften this even more, I could hit it with some sandpaper. I can glaze over this. Um, I showed you guys a few weeks ago how to use glaze, but it's lovely and you can really get some beautiful um, designs with stencils. Now for our really rough surface. So this is a technique we learned in the Surface Anthology membership and it was creating this really rough, chippy, um, authentic heirloom finish. And it's rough. I mean, you know, I could run my fingers over it, but somebody might look at this and say, I don't know if I could stencil on it. Well, you can. So I, I first tried the green too light. So I got some black paint and another brush. And I'll just put it over where I started with our number seven. Same deal. Offload. That is the key. And again, I forgot tape, but you should tape this down. And I actually... I actually like this brush better. So I'm gonna mix my two colors together. I'm kind of a, a brush snob. I've always been this way. From art school to when I did makeup, I just, I'm really picky <laughs> about my brushes. Now, you can even create like a shadow effect if you move, like if I first did this in white and then moved it a little bit like diagonally down and away and um, stenciled with black. It's a whole world. Okay, that looks good. And there's our number seven. Really beautiful. Um, I find that I can use stenciling along with, I sell the Iron Orchid transfers and molds. And when you start to layer some of these things, you just get this really beautiful depth of design, texture, and um, your eye just is drawn to these pieces. So try stenciling. Again, you're going to need a really good stencil brush. They are not expensive. 
They last forever. I've had these for years. Some um, paint. I've stenciled with milk paint, chalk paint. I've used watercolor. Um, you can really stencil with anything. The key is that when you're dipping your brush in perpendicular, that you offload the majority of that paint. You see, it doesn't go far up. It's pretty thick. And once you're done, this does need to be finished if you're using a chalk paint. So I can go ahead, if I wanted to soften this, I could sand it a little bit, and then I would throw some wax on it. So that's it, you guys. If you're interested in my Surface Anthology membership, it will be opening up soon. And it's every single month, like this month we're going over all the different ways to create aging and wear um, to create that authentic finish. And there are endless ways. It, it, you don't need sandpaper to do that. So that's what we're covering in Surface Anthology um, this month. And it's $21 a month. It's going to be for founding members because I haven't actually opened it. I haven't done a big launch yet. Um, but I have some wonderful members in there already. And part of the membership, along with the monthly lesson and optional kit, um, is that you get 20% off of everything at the Chalk Mercantile website all the time. So that's one of the perks. And um, a Facebook group, weekly lives, tutorials, and all that good stuff. Give stenciling a try. Let me know how it goes. If you guys have any questions, ask in the comments, like I always say, and happy painting.